Hi, I'm Deneen Milner. I'm the director of Deneen Milner Books and the New York Times bestselling author. And today I'm presenting to you a book that I wrote called Early Sunday Morning. It's illustrated by a dear friend of mine, Vanessa Brantley Newton. Here we go. Early Sunday Morning. This book, I should tell you, is based on uh, a story about me when I was a little kid. And I decided to write it um, because I think that I learned an important lesson that I want to share with you today. Sunday is the Lord's Day when Mommy, Daddy, my brother and I go to church. This Sunday is extra special because I'll be singing my first solo in the youth choir. I sing lots of songs in the mirror when no one is watching. Sometimes daddy and I sing loud, silly songs together and giggle at the funny words. Singing with daddy is when I am happiest of all. But singing by myself with a microphone in front of a crowd is big and a little scary. Even at choir rehearsal when barely anyone's watching me practice, my voice gets all trembly. One day I heard Angela and Tommy whisper and, big and giggle as I walked back to my seat. Good grief. Sister Sarah could have just given that solo to a goat. It might not remember the words, but at least it would be able to sing the notes. Their words dumb. So did my tears. Everybody knows I am nervous, and so they all tell me their ideas for how I can sing my song strong and clear. Auntie thinks wearing a new dress will help. Looking fancy makes you feel brave, she promises. Even Mr. Harvey the barber adds in his two cents. See, what you have to do is pretend everyone in the audience has a big old watermelon head. You'll be too busy laughing to be scared, he says as he spins my brother Troy around in his chair. The night before my big solo, Mommy washes my hair with strawberry shampoo and sits me on pillows while she twists it into a beautiful crown. Sometimes if I sit really still and don't make too much of a fuss, she lets me have a bowl of ice cream. But I am fidgety. Tomorrow you'll sing your song so pretty that angels will shout in heaven, she says. Believe that with all your heart. I will, I say, quietly. Early Sunday morning is when the magic happens. A gentle nudge and it's rise and shine. Give God the glory. Troy and I wake up to the smell of roast beef, macaroni and cheese, collards, cornbread, and sweet potato pie, my favorite. Mommy always makes Sunday dinner in the morning so we can eat right after church. That's because sometimes when Pastor Scott gets lost in the rhythm, he can preach on and on and on way into the afternoon. We eat cereal and toast to hold us over until dinner, until dinner time. After breakfast, I brush my teeth and wash my face and check my hair while mommy lays out my church clothes, new dress, tights, and my Mary Janes shined up like a new penny. My choir robe hangs from the top of my bedroom door, stretching like a white river almost to the doorknob. A sight to see. Troy steps out of his room, cool as you please, in his suit and tie, looking just like Daddy when he takes Mommy out dancing. He giggles when he sees me twirling in my fancy suit. In my fancy dress, not suit. He's in the suit. She's in the dress.
We both watch mommy swoosh gloss across her lips. When she gives a little tug at our church hat and pinches each of our cheeks, Troy and I know it's almost time to go. We wake daddy to hug and kiss him goodbye. He worked an extra shift at the bakery, so on this Sunday, he will have to rest. Daddy won't be coming to see me sing, and this makes me sad. But it gives me peppermints and money for the offering, plus a hug and lots of kisses to help me be brave. If you get nervous, just pick a spot in the church and sing to it like you do your mirror, he says. Daddy will be there with you in spirit, singing along with you. Knowing this, we'll have to do. Oh, look at who that is. It's my little puppy, Teddy. Hi, Teddy. Sometimes he likes the stories too. I can barely keep still in Miss Ellis's Sunday school class. We're learning about love and how it's patient and kind and never ever fails. Miss Ellis's lesson makes me want to hug mommy and daddy and Troy and grandpa Jimmy and grandma Betty and Belly, our puffy blue angelfish. But then I see the microphone over by the choir pews and suddenly I'm scared again. I watch the hands on the clock as the collection plate is passed and Deacon Clater reads the announcements and little Kelvin makes the whole Sunday school laugh when he prays for God to make Pastor Scott's sermon in early enough for him to watch the football game. After Sunday school, mommy helps me into my robe. Then she folds my hands into hers and gives me that knowing look, one that says, everything's going to be all right. I want to believe that. At least I try. When our youth choir marches through the doors, every eye is on us. We float down the aisle like an army of angels, lifting our voices in praise all the way to the rafters. And right there in the front pew is mommy, smiling and singing and shaking her tambourine. fidget while Pastor Scott welcomes the visitors and leads the prayer. Then the notes to my song rise up from the organ. Miss Jackson's fingernails tap loudly against the keys as the melody fills the church. Praise him, I hear my mother say. Tell it to the Lord, one of the deaconesses shout. I don't look at the choir director or even my mother. I do not imagine watermelons or remember what my dress looks like. Instead, I pick a spot to focus on just like daddy told me to, and I lean into the microphone as I stare at the double doors. And just when I swallow really hard and take a deep breath and get ready to sing my first note, the double doors swing open and there is daddy standing tall and handsome with the smile outshined only by mine. Sing, baby, he shouts. I lift my voice and sing with the might of the angels, just like I do when I'm alone in my room, dancing in front of my mirror, and when daddy is singing alongside me too. And the church shouts, amen. I hope you enjoyed early Sunday morning.